Okay, so um, this is the first x-ray. Describe this x-ray. So the x-ray of the knee joint, skeletally immature, name and uh, site not mentioned. And there is the uh, uh, cupping of the looks uh, metaphysis. It's not cupping. It's, what is that? This is a is this is a six month old baby and it's the right knee. Yeah? Okay, so six month old baby right knee. Increase thing we see in England. <clears throat> This is a baby who's always crying. This is a baby whose parents are both alcoholics. What comes to mind? Sir, child abuse. Absolutely. This is called a corner fracture, okay? So if you see corner fracture, what is the next thing you're going to do? Sir, um, I would like to take the complete history and uh, the relevant examinations. Good. From head to toe. So, uh, the, the examination uh, will, will show you something or not, but basically there'll be a lot of bruising on the patient. And this is the x-ray of the patient's chest. Right. It's a classical feature of child abuse. Okay. The classical feature of child abuse is there are various stages of hip fractures. Yes, various. So there's healing fracture, callus, 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 callus. But there's a new fracture. So there's new fractures, old fractures, and healing fractures. Yeah, this is classical mm -hmm. child abuse. So what is the next investigation you will do? Uh, uh, Sir, what about uh, cervical vertebra and also the... Uh, yeah, so you will do what is called a skeletal survey. You will have x-rays of all the bones of the baby. Yes. Okay. So if somebody shows you an x-ray like this in the exam and it says this is an x-ray of a knee with a corner fracture of a skeletally immature person, I suspect child abuse or a non-accidental injury. Okay. So then uh, the examiner will ask you, what do you want to do next? And you say, I will examine the patient, take a proper history, and I will also organize a skeletal survey. The skeletal survey will show you various stages of fracture healing. They are not all of the same age. This is a make of child abuse. Okay? Right, sir. Good. So in this case, uh, clinical examination it will be more important because six months old uh, child, how can he... Describe his history. You can ask the history from, from the parents, you can ask the history from the family. What happens is the family will bring the child and they will tell you 10 days ago he fell and we brought it. So it will give you suspicion that somebody who is a child who's hurt 10 days, how can he have an injury uh, that the parents did not bring him to the hospital straight away? Because every child that gets hurt, even if you've got a small little bruise, everybody takes him to the hospital, isn't it? The second thing is the child will be listless and will be not interested in the surrounding. And the third thing is, in a non-walker, if you have a limb fracture, that's also diagnostic of a non-accidental injury because uh, a child that does not walk cannot have lung bones fractured, isn't it? But, but <clears throat> taking a history in the, in the examination is, is a generic term we all use, but that basically means we're going to survey and find out what's happening with the person. Okay. Remember, non-accidental injury is common exam topic. Yes. Okay, so what is this? So this uh, is the lazy the... file. That's okay. One at a time. You must tell me who you wants to go with the next paper. We can't have it all of them. See, who, who wants to play with this? So we will do topic-wise. One of you will say that this is what I want to talk about, and we'll all go through it. We can't do haphazard. Yes. So who wants to say? Salman, you want to talk about it, is it? No. Uh, sir, uh, which one? Uh, this one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sir. Uh, this is a uh, child in which we're doing the physical examination of the Galazi's test. Good. So, what's a Galazi test? So, uh, Galazi's test is to uh, differentiate the limb uh, length uh, uh, during limb length uh, discrepancy to evaluate either it is uh, femoral or tibial. 
Okay, so what do you think this one is? Sir, I would like to do a uh, uh, side view, sir, because... Uh, I don't have a side view, yeah, but this is a femoral one, yeah? Uh, yeah, it's more likely the femoral one. So what, what would, would give you a femoral uh, diagnosis and what, what are the differential diagnosis of femoral shortening? Sir, uh, sir uh, can it be uh, Perthes, can it be a DDH? So it, it cannot be Perthes because that means quite a lot of shortening, isn't it? But if, right. Yeah, but if, even in dysplastic hip, you don't get that kind of obviously. So what is the commonest cause of a child of less than 10 years old who comes with a GVNC, uh, plus which shows the femur is short? Also, uh, physical injury? Sorry? DDH, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it, it, this is a, a dysplastic dislocated hip in a 10 year old, okay? So how right. is it yes, dislocated? I'm sorry, sir, okay. I missed the question, sir. So how do you know this is dislocated on the X-ray? Sir, uh, I would uh, uh, like to apply the lines of Heilgenkers and Perkins lines. Okay. To make, to make quadrants. The hip, uh, the femoral head should be at the and, uh, medial inferior uh, okay. quadrant. So this is outside and superior, yeah? Yes, sir. Okay, so what will you do with this child who's now about eight to 10 years, between eight and 10 years old, and you missed his dysplastic hip as a child? Uh, sir, uh, I would like to counsel the, uh, the parents first uh, for uh, surgical correction and make uh, for recurrence. I would like to do the adductor tenotomy, reduce the femoral head, <clears throat> so these are all surgical options. Before you do a surgical option, you will investigate this. What is it that you want to do to know what you can do for this patient? Uh, sir, I would like to rule out any other associated uh, anomalies. Yes, yeah, so this, uh, they've, got, they've got a high incidence of various other things, like I said, but like yes, blood feet and, and stuff like that. But this doesn't. Child, this patient does not have anything at all. So it's just an isolated, left-sided, left-sided dysplastic hip. So what what can you do before you want to operate? So I would like to do a complete uh, workup, rule yeah. out uh, any metabolic anomalies, so the, any uh, any clinical any uh, hyperlexia. Okay, so that, that's not the case. You see, you must understand the question. The first thing you do with patients that comes with a dysplastic or dislocated hip, but is outside the normal uh, uh, age range, because normally you see them in less than a year, isn't it? You see them at uh, three months, six months, or something like that. But if I come to that stage. You want to know, first of all, is, is it reducible or not, okay? And to do that, you will do an EUA plus an arthrogram, okay? What will the arthrogram show you? In this case, so in, a, in, a, in a ten in a 90-year-old, what will the arthrogram tell you? Sir, uh, it would be a show of uh, the deforming elements, hourglass appearance of the uh, labrum. Uh, sorry, hourglass appearance of the capsule, the yeah. inverted labrum. And uh, maybe the uh, overlapping uh, the of the ileus was tendon. Okay, so the easiest thing to say in the exam is that once I do the MR arthrogram, it will show me the abnormalities of the labrum, and there's a thing called pulvinar. What's that? So if your socket is not filled with head, it fills with tissue, and that tissue is called pulvinar. So you need to know that before you want to reduce them to make sure that you can reduce them. Sometimes uh, it does not show a a, a filling of the defect, and then you do an EUA. If you can reduce this in an EUA, what can you do? Uh, sir, after, uh, if, if it's uh, reducible in the EUA, I would like to apply the hip sc spiker, okay. and uh, I would like to uh, sort of follow up. Uh, so a hip uh, spiker in a 10 year old, how, how easy is that? Sorry, sir? You put a hip spike on a 10 year old, how are you going to manage his toilets and going to the bathrooms and all no, of that? No, no. I said I was <laughs> confused with the. Yeah, uh, how about the abduction brace, sir? Yeah, you can put in what is called a broomstick plaster. You know what a broomstick plaster is? Uh, no, sir, I haven't seen, sir. Okay, so in a broomstick plaster, you do what is called a below, above knee or a below knee, well, depends on how young the child is. If in this age you will put an above knee plaster not the hip or the, the, the perineum, but then put a broomstick between the two of them to do an abduction external where you want to fix it. 
Do you understand what I mean by that, broomstick? So it's like an abduction brace, but you make it with a plaster, okay? And the, and the abduction and rotation is controlled by a stick, which is to the as part of it. This is called broomstick. They can walk in it. They can go to the toilet. They can do various things, okay? So yeah. go and ask what we're going to ask. So no, like no, it is like a uh, Craig splint like I will I will show you a picture at the end of the, the the meeting yeah because I think I have it somewhere but it is called a broomstick plaster I will I will send it on the link actually okay so you you if you do not reduce it and you can't reduce it what can you uh, can you do with these so you've done an EUA and then, not reducible and then we have the option of with an open uh, reduction how are you going to open this? The, the, through the anterior approach, sir. Okay, it's, what is that? Uh, so, this is an interval between the incision, somerville or bikini like incision, and uh, interval between the tensor fascia lata and uh, sartorius. Very and good, yeah. We, what else? Then we, then we open the capsule and uh, remove the obstacles like. Uh, uh, pulvinar uh, and uh, 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 sauce tendon and uh, like uh, transverse uh, uh, ligament and uh, labrum whatever we, re uh, we remove that and then we relocate and uh, assess uh, the position okay. and uh, if what we are require the, are the, there are two things you have to know before you do relocation you need to do either a pelvic osteotomy or you need to do a femoral osteotomy isn't it Yes, sir. To reduce sir, the, uh, the paraparator, we check the stability. Yes. Uh, either the hip is stable in neutral position or in abduction. So then we decide the osteotomy, uh, like we need a, a femoral derotation osteotomy or we need pelvic osteotomy like uh, Salter or Pemberton. Okay. Or other. So it is far easier, far easier that you do an EUA and you see that you cannot reduce it, then you do a CT scan of the patient. By doing a CT yes. scan of the patient, you will know whether it's a deficient uh, estabulum or the femoral, if the femur is in valgus varus or, or, or malalign like this, and then you can turn your osteotomies after you have done the CT scan. Because it is very difficult to plan an osteotomy once you've opened the patient. So these should be done before the operation is planned okay what are the complications of doing this a uh, uh, bikini line incision that you have what are the complications so uh, complications um, nerve injury sir so which one yes good femoral nerve we have to protect it yeah and because it comes in and and uh, and for gluteal nerve, lateral glutinous nerve of the thigh. Very good, yeah, but you must also understand that if it is short and you want to reduce it to length again, which nerve are you stretching most? Uh, the sciatic nerve. So the sciatic nerve. Okay, so you cannot stretch it too much to allow the sciatic nerve to come back again. Obviously, every time oh. we operate, there is a risk of infection, there is a risk of, of, yeah. of, of stiffness, there is a risk of regal dislocation. These are all complications that you have to explain to the patient. So now again, Avian. let's uh, you know, polish this. So this is a, a picture, okay, or a prop, that's mm. what you can say. This is a picture or a prop of a child uh, showing a Galeazzi test, okay? So the, yes. then the examiner will tell you which side is, is, is the problem. He says, well, show me the lateral, as you guys says. And this examiner may have a lateral or may not have a lateral and will tell you that there is no lateral, this is the problem, and it's, it's the female that's shortened. So if, if you are talking about that kind of shortening, the first thing that should come to your mind is this plastic hip. You will tell them that this looks like a DDH. You want a plain film mm -hmm. of the patient, okay? So the examiner will then yes. show you this x-ray. You will tell the examiner that this is obviously a dislocated hip. Uh, I would like to do the H line uh, and the Perkins line to decide which quadrant it is. So then you tell the examiner, well, how are you gonna manage this? You will say, I would like to take consent Assuming that there is no other abnormalities, and this is an isolated injury, I want to EUA this patient and do an arthrogram to make sure that there is no uh, obstruction to the hip and that the hip is reducible or not. So if the examiner says it is reducible, then you say, I will manage this in a broomstick. Sorry, you know the, 
the, the forum that we have. I have just sent a picture of a broomstick pic uh, on it. You okay, know, so so have a look at it. So basically what you do is you do an above knee plaster and you put a broomstick across it to hold it in the position where it's stable. So if you cannot use this on the table, then you will, I will ask for a CT scan to define where the problem is, whether it's the astabulum or whether it's the femur. And depending on where the problem is, I can do a femoral osteotomy. I can do a astabular osteotomy or a combination of both to make sure that the head goes in. Okay. Yes. Yes, sir. Happy with that? You will not have a problem with a dysplastic hip now, yeah? Yes, sir. One thing more, sir. Shenton line broke in Shenton line. Very good. Okay. So, so in the exam, if you say Shenton line, you must know what a Shenton line is, and you must know how to describe yes. it. Okay. So, who was Shenton? Yes, sir. So, Shenton line is below the inferior uh, I neck. Uh, I understand that. So, so, who was Shenton? If you say Shenton, some examiners will ask you who was Shenton. I don't know Shenton. Yeah, no, not many people know that, isn't it? So, what you should say is that the articulating line between the hip is broken. And if the examiner says, What do you call that? Then you say it's the Shenton line. Okay, if we give up Shenton lines, I mean, I do take exam and somebody tells me what's the Shenton line, I will ask them what is the Shenton line. Isn't it? Okay, but never mind. Okay, so that's that's done. Okay, I will. We will do it. I mean, we've got lots of time for the exam. We will do proper hip dysplasia and all that kind of stuff. But this is just a prop to look at and see if we can talk about it in the exam. Okay. So who's next? Yes, Who wants to go next? So I will do. Okay, go on then. Sir, X-ray of the skeletally mature patient and uh, showing AP and lateral view. Yeah. And there is the deformed anterior lateral deformity uh, at the distal end of the tibia. So it's called tibial bowing, yeah? So what, what it's an anterior yes, lateral one, is it? Yes, so yes, sir, anterior lateral. So it looks and uh, pseudoarthrosis. Where do you see pseudoarthrosis? So, uh, on the uh, basis of the uh, Boeing and... Uh, yeah, I know, I know, it is, it is. But which, which condition do you see pseudoarthrosis in? Which condition we see? I cannot... The neurofibromatosis. Absolutely. This is what pseudo... Arthrosis would look like. How will you manage a pseudoarthrosis? Sir, management depends on the age and uh, uh, fracture, presence of fracture. Okay. If uh, one child is below the age of like four years and no fracture is there, so only we need uh, observation and protect uh, um, clamshell arthrosis or braces, like um, uh, and to prevent the fracture. Yes, yeah, so it's if called. Example loves is the Malgana Che, this can number of things. It's called serial casting. Okay, so these patients serially cast. You see them every three weeks and you apply a plaster and see if it'll straighten up. Okay, this is called serial casting. Mm. Or you can yes, do serial bracing where the brace does not you know, uh, stabilize it as much as a, a <coughs> plaster does. So you go, you bring them every three weeks and you apply a plaster to correct it a bit more. Mm. And this will straighten. 50% of them will get straightened, okay, but they are difficult fractures. If you, if you are above four years old, what would you do? So if fracture happened, sir? No, if, if, if it's four years old and above, what will you do then? There is no fracture. And, uh, then, uh, <clears throat> sir, we have the uh, goal of treatment should be the resection of the pseudoarthrotic bar and uh, alignment, maintaining the alignment of the lower limb uh, like mechanical axis and, and uh, okay, so using exam ka job. This is kitab ka job. What is exam ka job? So counseling of the like okay, start yeah. with the counseling of the parents uh, what, uh, what uh, about the nature of the disease, what okay. it is yeah, and it's how it's much exam ka job hai complex pediatric problem yes, sir. so for, for this child to have a, a correct 
uh, management, I will refer this patient to the nearest pediatric or Okay? Okay, sir. job Okay, I will refer to अगला सवाल जवाब सवाल तो यह आएगा ना वो तो आप प्रेफर करोगे चलो आप ही बैठे हो आप क्या करोगे वो कर... Don't say that you refer it you will lose marks okay you will okay. have to say this in the exam that this patient is a complex pediatric problem I will refer it to the nearest pediatric orthopedic surgeon the examiner will hundred percent next question will say yes the nearest orthopedic pediatric surgeon is one thousand miles from you you are in the middle of nowhere you are now going to manage this how are you going to do it or he will say that you are the regional orthopedic pediatric specialist tell me how you'll manage it so then you tell them how to manage it but if you don't tell them that this will be a complex problem sent to the pediatric surgeon your examiner will fail you okay so you have to say these things oh. they're all exam protocols okay sir so the answer to this is this is a complex problem I will send this to nearest pediatric orthopedic surgeon and then he will ask you you are the nearest pediatric orthopedic surgeon what you will do then you will say it still is a complex problem. There are various ways of managing this. I can do an osteotomy and correct it with a frame, or I can still yes. continue doing serial casting, or I can do what is called a lengthening nail. Have you seen those nails where you do an osteotomy, which is called a seek kebab nail? Have you seen that? So, so William Anderson nail is like a... Yes, it's a, don't name names. You tell them that I will do a nail with it, do an osteotomy, okay. a seek kebab osteotomy. Do you understand what it means by seek kebab osteotomy? Yes, sir. Multiple osteotomy correction, and we put a nail. And we will use this in osteogenesis imperfecta. Also, in this condition, if you want to, but it is a complex problem. There is a high failure rate in these uh, pseudoarthrosis. Very high failure rate. But sir, we have to use the graft in this. We have to resect the pseudoarthrotic part. No? Yes, you so, will need to need the graft for what? And what is that called? Graft called. Sir, vascularized fibular graft the ideal and uh, if you so uh, I, I, I thought you said graph not graft what what graph do you use to know in these kind of children the growth graph you need to know how long this child has to grow how much growth is left and when you do your correction you incorporate that okay so if the child okay. is not growing to do then you don't do osteotomies if the child oh, hasn't got growing to do and it's, it's come to a stage where it's, it's, it's now uh, 12 years old or more, then you can do an osteotomy. But you need to do one of those graphs which predicts how much uh, growing this child has to do and where he's going to be at certain age. Okay? Okay, sir. Okay, so next, who's next? This is the last one, okay? We've done two... two uh, Me, sir. Sir? The so, should I start? Yeah, yeah, of course. The X-ray uh, look scanogram, look scanogram of the skeletal immature patient, and uh, showing the uh, left side lower limb uh, means shortening of the femur and uh, tibia. The whole means uh, bones are involved. Sir. So what what do you see? So I am suspecting uh, about focal femoral deficiency, like superior level. I cannot. It's not. What's that? Not. That's a fibula, isn't it? Yes, absence of fibula on the opposite side. This side. Oh. Yes, sir. Right. It's called a fibula femoral. Okay. So what are the features of fibular hemimelia? Dr. Saab, I'm a shoulder surgeon. I'm studying pediatrics. You should know all these things. Anterior medial bowing. Right? So start from the top. What, is, what happens in fibular hemimelia at the top here? Sir, it is associated with uh, proximal femoral focal dysplasia. Could do that, or there is shortening of the uh, or, or femoral head. The femoral head is shorter than the opposite side. Okay, there is flaring yes. of the physis. The yes, femoral condyle is not developed as much as the other side because there is no fibula. There is bowing. Which bowing did you say with the femoral hemia? Anterior medial bowing, isn't it? Yes, sir. yes. Yes, and the ankle is not developed properly. Okay. These are all classic features of fibular hemimelia. Yes. Patients. 
what you will do is you will find out where he is on the growth chart, how much growing he is, and then plan uh, a distraction osteogenesis with a with a frame. Yes. Okay. The fibular hemimelia is also means associated with the proximal focal femoral deficiency. Yes, it is. So but if this is the typical case, you can see then you will have no problems with the ankle here. This all will be normal. That will be abnormal. Yeah. Okay, so this yes, is sir. normal. Yeah. And, and only in the ones where the distal femur is not developed in the focal deficiency will you have a fibular hemimelia. Because if you have a normal distal femur, then you will not have a fibular hemimelia. Oh. <clears throat> okay, so that's good. It is good. You guys know everything. You just need to polish yourself to talk better in the exam. And that's why this, I mean, I don't understand why you guys are all afraid to come to the Sunday teaching. It's all to develop your ability to speak. You know, exam mein bolna bhot zaruri hota hai, wahan pe khamoshi jo hoti hai na, un number kaatti hai. And all this is to, to teach you how to express yourself, because all of you have knowledge. But if you don't tell the examiner, you don't know. That's what the examiner thinks like. Okay, okay so one more, one more final one. Okay. Yes, sir. Can somebody volunteer? Guys, I'm not volunteer before you need to talk. You need to learn how to say things in the exam. Sir, uh, this is the duplication of the thumb. Okay. Sir. So, what kind of uh, uh, congenital deformity is this? And it is a duplication, I agree with you, but what kind of deformity is this? So there is a failure of arrest, which is longitudinal or horizontal, then there is overgrowth, and then there's duplication, okay? In congenital anomaly, this is a duplication of a digit, especially in thumb, which is more common than anything else. So if you have a duplication of the thumb, what is the next thing would you like to have? We have to skeletal, do the skeletal survey to exclude other anomalies, Okay, that's good. So you yeah. first thing you will do is you will do an X-ray of the hand. Okay? Yes, sir. <clears throat> yes, sir. So you will do an X-ray of the hand and you will physically look at the patient, but you will do X-ray of the hand. Now, this is the same patient. What can you see on the X-ray? Yes, sir. This is the uh, duplication uh, noted on the thumb side. And there's the uh, so classification. Vessel. Vessel. Vessel classification, yes, sir. Vessel classification, there is a buffet or uh, duplication of the phalangeal. This is a complete duplication of thumb. You have a, 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 yes, a distal phalanx, proposal phalanx, and the metacarpus. Okay, so it's, all, it's a complete duplication. Okay, so now he's taken his father and his mother and said that our child is going to be a good friend and we are going to be a good friend, so what do we have to do with this? And now you tell me what you want to do with this. Sir, we have to counsel that closer to the index finger means the part that we have to prevent it. The more uh, radial one hota hai, usko excise karte. Okay, so before you say anything like that, you will say first of all is I will assess that which of the two thumb has got full tendon supply, which of the two have got full nerve supply, and which of these two have got full vascular supply. So assessing the function, neurovascular, neurovascular assessors. Now, if both of them are the same, then you're right. This is what we do is we we try to make sure that that we keep anatomy by taking. Uh, uh, the digit that is too far away from from the index finger. That's correct. But before you do that, you may want to make sure that which one has got the complete function of muscle, nerve, and vessel. Okay. Okay, sir. This is common in Pakistan, actually. Very common. Who's next? Um. This, is, this is a this is a fifteen year old girl. Okay. She's come to you with the clinic and the parents are saying when she walks, she has got a lot of, you know, bowing and, and she walks funny. So this is a uh, plain radiograph uh, of an undocumented uh, individual and in undocumented sides. Maybe a both limbs. Undocumented, sorry. Eh? 
Yeah. Uh, I can appreciate, sir, uh, the digital uh, FEMA, the need point, and the proximal. Uh, yeah. So, in uh, exam, you will not get an X ray or a CT or an MRI scan which shows the name of the patient, the age, and everything because you have to keep the identity of the person from everybody. So you cannot, you cannot name it, and it's gone, old days are gone now. You cannot have a name or age or anything on the patient, but the examiner will give you information. So I've told you this is the girl, and she is 15 years old, and she's an internet, and you can see both sides. So you don't need to know which is right and left, because you can look at it and tell me. So what do you see? It says X-ray was clearly mixture, standing view of a girl. Metaphysical, sir, cupping, widening, of the facet and uh, bowing of the diaphysis. So what kind of bowing do you see? Uh, a little. But it's a posterior lateral bowing, okay? What is common in posterior lateral bowing? The rickets, sir. Is what? Rickets. Rickets. How do you diagnose rickets? So, Sir, uh, one is the uh, physical, uh, the history, the physical examination, the associated other anomalies, including the cranial tapis, the cutsy rosy cupping of the distal radius, okay. and also. Hello? Go, go on. And the patient will totally tell you one thing. Uh, what will the patient tell you or the patient's family? Um. Sir, so, uh, the patient, uh, the patient, uh, the parents will say that the uh, patient is undernourished, or she is uh, not taking her meals, or she has chronic malabsorption problem. The patient will not tell you that. The patient will tell you she so is they will yeah. going are the deformity. They are concerned. Parent will be concerned that are the pain. gradual deformity increasing. They will tell you about pain, not eating well, uh, bowing of the legs. And failure yes. to make landmarks or milestones. Okay? Yes, sir. De so, delayed growth. Like. Six years old, the girl is. The rest of the six year old girls are from them. They are small and they are different. Okay? Yes, sir. Tell you failure to make meet uh, milestones, not feeding well, short and bowing and pains. Okay? What are you mm -hmm. going to do to confirm the diagnosis? Okay. So, what are you going to do to diagnosis confirm the diagnosis? So then we advise the blood investigation like uh, serum calcium level, phosphate level, and most of the vitamin D level. So how are you going to treat the patient? Uh, okay. Sir, there will be a decreased level of calcium phosph uh, phosphate, elevated level of uh, alkaline phosphatase, and a decreased level of uh, serum vitamin D levels. So treatment is easy to definitely Vitamin D uh, Sorry, sir. Uh, I was cutting, sir. Vitamin D, vitamin D supplement or with the calcium supplement, sir. Oh, <laughs> vitamin D plus <laughs> calcium supplement. And diagnose them, manage them, you reassure the parents and tell them that vitamin D, so we have to give them vitamin D supplements. Okay. Yes, sir. In Pakistan, we, we see them quite a lot in England also because there is no sunshine. So everybody is always about to play so they have children have especially from asian families they have a high incidence of malnutrition in this country anyway uh, take uh, sir, yeah. excuse me, sir. Uh, can i ask a question sir of course uh, sir uh, in this patient on this case uh, during examination should we mention that uh, this patient would like uh, a review by me and also a specialist of uh, endocrinologist or pediatrician yeah, so, so that, that, that's okay. You can say that, but this is a simple, straightforward problem that is called vitamin D deficiency, isn't it? So you don't have to send it to an endocrinologist or a, or a pediatrician to do that. Right, sir. There is no harm in saying, let's put it that way, but it is not compulsory. But in a, in a patient with neurofibromatosis and those pseudoarthrosis, these are all complicated problems you have to discuss with the pediatrician, including the dysplastic hips. You know, we, we did a discussion on that. Pediatric surgeon, not everybody does them. I mean, I, I right, saw pediatric uh, hips when I was doing a pediatric rotation. I've not seen one or done one since, like you know. So, but in the exam, uh, you have to be safe. You cannot say things that you can't retract. So, in the exam, if you have a difficult pediatric case or a difficult trauma case or a difficult spine case, you must always say to keep yourself safe 
this is a complex problem and I will get the specialist involved in it. There is a 100% chance that the examiner will say that you're the specialist, now deal with it. Or there is nobody around you, you have to deal with it. But if you don't say that I will ask a specialist for you, then that goes negatively against your marking. Like it is all a right. method of how, what you say or what you answer your question with. So, so okay, yeah, sir. Okay, 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 sir. سامنے بولتا ہے اور سب صحیح نہیں نکلتے نیکسٹ ویک جو ہے وہ ادھر جو جو پاکستان سوسائٹی کا جو آرسکوپی فورم ہے نا اس کی میٹنگ ہو رہی ہے